Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on site here in Uta Springs, Kansas. We're in front of my shop where we're doing a couple of demonstrations. Now, I, I've been asked several times about inverter power supplies and uh, how sensitive are they to, uh, to generator power. And I gotta tell you, over the years, uh, they've gotten better and better. Uh, 20 years ago, they were extremely sensitive. Uh, we came up with this little machine called MT-125. MT stands for Mr. Tig. And it runs off of household current, 115. And it was designed to be able to pick up and move and go to the racetrack or go portable. So we thought, you know what, we're going to find out whether it will withstand the generator. So what I did was I didn't get a fancy generator. I got the lowest cost industrial generator that Lincoln makes. And it's called the Bulldog. In fact, I've got my assistant here with me. This is Seth, and, uh, and Seth's going to pull start this because it doesn't have electric start. Uh, he's much younger than I am, so uh, we'll, we'll let him crank it over in a few minutes here. But anyway, decided to test this even further. I didn't just put the welding machine next to the generator and plug it in. I'm going to see if my RV extension cord will work. Now this is a hundred foot extension cord and I'm sure if you go in the books and uh, you know it says the things not to do the, the Bulldog instructions are going to say hey don't use a hundred foot extension cord but this is heavy duty and our machines inside the shop here a uh, hundred feet away so I'm going to go ahead and have Seth start this and I'm going to plug this in and then uh, we're going to go in and see if the MT-125 works. So Seth why don't you go ahead and see if you can crank this over. All right, we got the Bulldog 5500 running. I'm gonna plug it into the 115. This looks like a 20 amp circuit. So I'll join you inside and we'll see what it'll do. Okay, we've got the generator started. Haven't turned the machine on yet. I've got a piece of aluminum here. I've got it pre-tacked. It's a aluminum, it's a butt weld. I've got Seth here with me. He's a student of mine, and uh, we always need new up-and-coming TIG welders. So, uh, Seth, I'm, I'm glad you're on the set. Now, I've talked about these easy wipes before, and uh, again, I like using them because they're convenient, they're easy. They've got isopropyl alcohol built into it. Uh, so I always wipe the surfaces down. Anyway, Seth, if you would, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to TIG weld. My TIG torch is going to be right here, and I'd like for you to watch the dabs and the rhythm that I have. Okay. Now, one of the important features of learning to TIG weld is holding the TIG torch very much like a pencil. You know, some people try to hold it like a club because they're used to MIG welding. So go ahead, hold it like a pencil, and then this part of your hand is your stabilizer. Now, I happen to be left-handed, so that's my dominant hand, but you very easily could could do it this way as well. So uh, if you would, turn the machine on to see if we've got power. I, I, hear, a, I hear a fan. Um, so far, so good. So I'm going to be welding somewhere around 60, 70 amps AC. Now this machine is an AC-DC machine. So we designed it port portable so you could uh, you know, put it over your shoulder, it's 30, 30 pounds or so. It only goes up to 125 amps, but it does have a good duty cycle to it. So if you're doing field repair or even uh, fabricating in the field, this will do just about everything you need. Okay, you're going to uh, hear the arc initiate, and I'm going to stay right on the puddle for a little while. I don't get in a hurry at all. Okay, here we go.
Could you see the dabbing take place? You know, and, and there's no hurry. Everybody has their own pace. Um, you know, the generator was running. I could see a little bit of fluttering, but, you know, I was uh, setting my machine at, uh, oh, I think I was probably running about 100 hertz, and that's that sound, that fluttering sound that you've got. And you can adjust it and set it to your liking, but uh, 100 hertz, and you can see that the edges wetted out very nicely. I didn't go concave. Um, go ahead and shut the machine off. Now again, we were using uh, 6061 aluminum. It's a 16 gauge material. Uh, again, my TIG torch is a nine. It didn't even challenge the torch. Um, good stability. I mean, we got the Bulldog 5500 running out there and I'm glad it's out there instead of here. Anyway, it, uh, it stabilized. You could field repair with this with no problem. Now, the real challenge in all this is I had a 100 foot extension cord. So, so kudos to Lincoln Electric for, for having a machine that's that stable. So, uh, hey, thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.